Welcome to my thoughts on the first official season of Gran Turismo FI Championships. Meaning the, the 2018 season, not like the practice rounds are going now. Or like the individual round one, round two, round three that were in the full season. And then like the one by one races in those rounds. By season, I mean, like, just now, drivers got crowned champions in each region. That's what I'm counting as a full championship, because now there's an official champion for 2018. And, well, that's over now. There's videos of the, like, official commentary of it on Gran Turismo TV of the championship rounds, which are definitely worth watching, because, well, I'd specialitate it if I made it, but that kind of goes into... Starting my review of the overall season. I, at my very best, I still don't think I would have quite made it. Like, even if somehow Tokyo Express Wations were out of loop and cards were literally all the races in the season, I still don't think I'd make the championship. But, one of the reasons I don't really think I would make it is because of random disconnections. I don't have the best internet in the world. And I barely did any races, like the two that I did, I made it in. But, for people with good connections, they still didn't even make it into a lot of the races. So if I were to try to make it in more races, I can all but guarantee I would have been disconnected from at least one. And then you all know the parameters that go with that. I've done a whole separate video on that, about boycotting the whole championships in general. Which I'm still not against. But, I'll go from a negative to a positive, saying... At least there were progressions throughout the championships. There were world changes, there were things to attempt... To actually do what the fans said to, and... It did seem like there were attempts to actually put in, like, input from the players. Which is good. I would say that the overall round, the penalty system got better. And some things actually did get fixed. There were some glitches fixed in terms of people getting disconnected. And there were some things fixed involved with like car physics and all that. Like they changed around the like literal physics in a bit which seemed to be positive. But there's still also a lot of things around that have always been around that people have pretty much always said to be fixed. Well, the penalty system does seem to be overall more accepted by the majority of people. It's still quite terrible. And I've also done another video on that, so I'm not going to go into that. But the one thing I haven't mentioned all that much yet is the overall, like, acceptance of races per, like, class. Meaning, how many people who are actually wanting to race to move up classes to the FIA races. Now that the daily races are weekly races, it's probably more, but I still don't really feel like the turnout is as good as it could be. Because really, the FI races all in all are just longer weekly races with points added onto them. And if people don't care about the points, and more about just progressing through classes, becoming a better driver, those points really mean nothing, and the majority of people don't really care about the points, because the points truly only matter if you're competing for the championships, or you're just a competitive person like me. But, um, yeah, it's kind of sad that in the past GT Academy games, they have rewarded prizes and stuff for winning. In this, they awarded points, and... A little bit of money for people who like won the overall championships and by money I actually sort of mean in-game money granted if you win the overall thing out of everyone I think you do get tangible stuff but there's the manufacturer and nation's winning bonus or whatever that gives in-game money to players who raced on the same manufacturer that won the points overall for like manufacturers in the same nation that won Nations Cup in your region but 
the way they calculate that isn't the overall points of every person who is in the in those cars or in those nations for the overall championship it was the top of the top which I guess kinda makes sense for nations just because you don't really change your size of a whole country in a tournament of Gran Turismo it's, it's gonna stay the same but manufacturers doing it that way seems a little bit unfair I feel like the manufacturer that has the most support overall should have the best chance of winning championship Granted, points should definitely be skewed towards the best of the best, but I still feel like no matter where you are in terms of overall points, your points should still count towards that to an extent. Because that actually will motivate players to play. Or again, like I've said in yet another video, they could just give out rewards like GT Academy. They've done something new in terms of the winning bonus, but I still feel like they could implement that better, or they could just do something tried and true, like the old GT Academy events. And then finally, that's more of not really positive or negative, that's just sort of fact, so I guess I'll attempt to end with a positive in that the overall presentation was actually really nice. They added some new cutscenes for winning the races, they've added some more like intros and stuff that have been there since the very beginning of the season that y'all have seen a lot but every number of those were added for this so that's a nice bonus that does look cool and most of all throughout the tournament i don't think these are completely related but it's still a nice thing to add they added suit and helmet livery editor granted those aren't the best in the world like the suit you can't add it edit the like pants part of it and the helmet there's certain areas you can't put decals on either, but it's better than nothing. And that made for a more immersive experience and for the people who actually get recognized either by themselves on their YouTube channels or in the fiscal races, which are on like Grand Turismo TV and stuff. And even the really superly official races that you actually go to live events with. You can use your own livery there and be seen by thousands of people. I don't know the exact number, but it's somewhere in the thousands, I would say. Between all of the YouTubers streaming the t Top 24 Superstars races, I would say that equals about a thousand or so. And then the main events would be like tens of thousands, I would assume. So, ish. Thousands of people. And that's pretty impressive. That is good motivation for the top of the top. And the top of the top, all in all, is who does get the recognition. But to end on, I end kind of like I started on, is... All in all, even though they've attempted to make things better to count all of the fans in, in terms of overall decisions, individual things, such as just rewards for everyone, depending on how good you do, and not just how good your country manufacturer does, and just the overall sense of continuing on, I guess, is a bit lackluster, honestly. Yeah, the champions get a lot of rewards and a lot of recognition, and deservedly so. But, like I've said really since the very beginning, this is more of a marketing tactic for that, honestly, than a true series put into a video game to benefit the video game itself, I feel like, at this point. Because a lot of people aren't playing anymore, a lot of people still don't have initiative to play, as I've explained in the past. And throughout all this, again, it may not be completely related, but they've had microtransactions, and they've made the daily races weekly races, so overall it's still less content. Granted, are they going to sell that? No. But they are going to show the best of the best doing their thing, and they should show that. But I feel like they should also somewhat mention everyone else in there too, and not have some kind of swept under the rug changes along the way, like those microtransactions and daily races being weekly races. I feel like they shouldn't just fizzle on content and to make the content more expensive of what they do add, just because they have this main selling point of the game, or quote unquote main selling point of the game going. They implemented this later on into the game's life than it probably should have been, and not even a year into the game's life completely, we're getting a lot less content, really. We're getting one seven for the content for daily races, aka weekly races, 
And while the FI races are actually like continuing on, not even the main season, we get the off season stuff. How exactly do we know if there's going to be truly new things to come in the new seasons? If it's just going to be basically a rehash? We don't until it happens. And that's one of the things I feel like all in all they should do is just more communication, more communication of what's going to come in the future. Or at least teases us of, of what's coming in the future. And more incentive for overall more people to race in total. Because, yes, it's fine to solve the best of the best. Because they definitely deserve it and put in effort for it. But all in all, I really don't think that's going to be how they make the most money in the long run. Granted, the best of the best may become real race car drivers. And then they will make money from that. But all in all, this is still a video game and not a racing platform. Granted, it's a racing video game that's quote-unquote simulation, but still. I play the game mostly because it's fun, and I'm sure I'm in the majority there. I am competitive, and I will try for points if the stipulations are correct. But I would rather have a fun game than an eSport game, in the grand scheme of things. Grand Turismo has always been meant to be a fun game, and having an eSport along with it is perfectly fine. I really don't think that should be the focus. And as of now, it kind of is. Again, y'all can have your own assumptions on this. This is just my opinion, but... While there's been a lot of good changes along the way, overall, it seems like some of the stuff that will ultimately be more of a negative along the way have somewhat tried to be swept under the rug by p themselves because they have this big grand tournament going on with real prizes, and fancy graphics and intros and all that. Again, that's good they have that, but it's gonna get old fairly quick if they don't change it up. And we're gonna just downright run out of stuff too if everything becomes microtransactions. People aren't gonna pay that, and then we just plain don't get anything. Grand Turismo doesn't have to speak of a fan base for GTI. I really don't think they can pull off microtransactions like they did. We know we don't even like GTA's microtransactions when that game is sold literally like eight times more than GT Sport or something like that across all the platforms. We'll see what the future holds, but for now it's somewhat underwhelming. I would say all in all it's about what I expected it to be. A lot of the things I predicted came true. I figured it was going to be more of a marketing platform than truly implementing all the players in it. I also figured there may be some good stuff added in along the way. Like it was kind of always implemented that we were going to get a livery editor for the suits and helmets. And it's cool that we did, but... Yeah, I was hoping I wasn't going to be right about the marketing aspects of it. And it's kind of looking like that's what happened. To tie into other videos I've already mentioned, should we boycott the tournament to try to make it better? Let's just see if they do give any teasers about the new tournaments before it actually starts. His ad is an hour, I'll give him credit, it is still off season and they're giving us some stuff to do in that downtime. It's just, I also feel like there should be some incentive to actually do those off season. Well, maybe it's not an actual prize, maybe it's not even like a reward like GT Academy because it is off season. I feel like they should at least give a teaser for the upcoming real season. So it gives motivation for people to actually practice in the off season. So, yeah, that's my review. Overall, it wasn't a failure, I don't think, because it did what they were trying to do. It motivated the very top of the top to actually race. Not as good as they could, because of the disconnects a bit, but that affected random people, so it was kind of... Saw it in the dark, so there was still somewhat motivation to race, because even if you missed a race, others may as well. It would be better if nobody missed any races, but PD doesn't seem to be able to have the capabilities of doing that, apparently. So, it was a success on their end, but overall, for everyone, well, y'all can make your own opinions of it, but at least in my opinion, it definitely could have been better. So, I hope y'all enjoyed this review, or thought it was correct or incorrect or whatever. Is it really worth a yee-haw? And the, uh, I mean, again, this is just my opinion, so I tried my best to 
implement like everybody's opinion who like heard someone in it and say like other people have said this or the majority of people said this or the best have said this. It's tempting to be unbiased, but all in all, this is still just my opinion of it. But I don't think I'm in the minority for a lot of my opinions on it. I will say that if I'm wrong, leave it in the comments because. That's the YouTube way. It's, as I've said before, YouTube comments are less toxic than sport mode racing. So I'm perfectly fine with you leaving your comments there because at least that's a bit of a relief from the penalty system and all the craziness in the sport mode racing. I'll end on that note, folks. I'll end on that note.